I'm going to have you do a little bit of practicing first on the colored pencils so that you can work on getting a smooth transition from dark to light because that's how we will be coloring our letters on our kaleidoscope drawing. First thing that I want you to be aware of is once your colored pencil has been wore down, do not let it get all the way down to the barrel of the wood like this one is. You always want to keep your pencils sharp, all right? Also, the other thing is, is you might want to find something such as this little lid or a container that you can just have right at your work area so that you can sharpen your pencils and just keep the shavings in there. Nothing worse than standing above a trash can to sharpen your pencils, only to accidentally drop your sharpener in a dirty trash can. Nobody wants to dig through trash to get the sharpener. So um, that's why I kind of suggest doing something like that. Um, all right, so here's the reason why you always want to keep it sharpened, okay? If I were to color with just the colored pencil and it's so dull that the wood scrapes against the paper here's what happens then when you finally do start to cover color over the top of it whoops my lead broke um, you can kind of see that white mark right there uh, it's trying to focus will it focus focus there we go you can kind of see that white mark right there. That is where the wood of the pencil actually scarred the paper. All right. So to start with, I want you to color in some squares with your colored pencils. My camera is kind of having problems here focusing. Pick whatever colors you want. You're going to give yourself a dark outline for a square. Start with a dark outline and then I'm going to turn the pencil over on its side and I'm kind of pressing with a hard pressure amount right now on the outside of my square and then I'm just going to lightly fade to the center. If I want it darker I can push a little harder with my pencil lead. I can also keep laying layers down. You can turn your paper so it's easier to reach those areas. So I'm moving my pencil rather slowly across the page, making sure that I'm getting all that white space of the paper filled in. So again, we're working on smooth transition on your value as you're laying the pencil down on your paper, okay? All right, so let's say, can you get, there we go. Now it's in focus here. We'll shift over a little bit there, okay? Um, as you're coloring, if you end up getting scribbled lines like that right there, we do not want scribbled lines, okay? That is not good craftsmanship skill. You need to slow down, come back in, and fill in those white gapped areas. So we have a smoother transition in value. So again, we don't want this to look scribbly. All right, so you need to make sure that you slow down. Next, once you get this technique down, then I want you to try it with your name template. So you're going to slide your name template underneath your paper and trace one of your letters. I already went ahead and traced my J, so hopefully you can see it there. It's very, very light. Just so you know, here's some guidelines. On your big drawing here, in a little bit, this big guy right here, you need to make sure that you don't see any of your original pencil lines, so you're probably going to want to come back in with your white vinyl eraser there and erase your pencil lines before you start with your colored pencil. Your grade will be reduced one whole letter grade if your graphite pencil lines show through, okay? This is bad craftsmanship skill right here, okay? 
This is not paying attention to details. So this is still probably a little too dark. So you're going to erase those pencil lines just so that you can barely see them. And then go over your shapes with your pencil, colored pencil. And then we're trying to achieve the same idea so that your letters are going to be dark on the outside, fade to the inside, and dark on the outside. So it's going to be layers. Sometimes I almost find it easier to kind of put down a light layer over the whole area that I'm working on. And then go back and darken up my other areas. Maybe put another little layer there. I always like my darkest area, that outline area, to be thicker than my pencil lead tip, okay? So that's why I'm kind of going in and broadening out that darkest area a little bit more. So you're going to practice one of your letters in this technique because it is a little bit different to understand like how to work around the curves of your letters. So I'm just going to plop in a nice light value first and then go back and add in my layers. Again, you're trying to make that smooth transition in value and not have scribble lines. And we'll let that fade in a little bit. Oops, I got a few scribble lines there. I need to get that filled in there. Okay. Maybe we'll make this a little bit wider here in my darkest value. All right, so there we have it. There's my little practice. So once you start to feel comfortable with that, then let me zoom out here. Once you get started on the big paper, please, please remember to erase your pencil lines first so that you can barely see them. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more here. There we go. Hopefully I didn't make anybody motion sickness there. All right. Now, as you're coloring this, all your letters need to have that value transition of dark to fading to the inside and then dark again, okay? All your letters are required to have the value transition. Now, keep in mind, whatever color you put down for your first letter of your name, it's going to be that same color in all four corners, okay? Next, let's talk about the background. You can do whatever you please with the background. On this particular example, I chose to have only one value of the color. So there I filled that in really dark with my black colored pencil. This was like a raspberry or a magenta. So you could do it that way if you wanted to. This one here, the person decided to, here, let's move mine out of the way. The person here decided to do that value transition also in the background pieces. They really liked how that looked, so you could do that if you wanted to. And one other thing that looks really nice, I'm going to zoom out one more time, is it is a wonderful idea to repeat colors. So this color on the outside here in the background is also repeated on the inside. So it's a great idea to repeat colors if you can in the background pieces. It will bring unity to the whole piece. So it's going to tie the outside 
of your drawing to the inside. It just pulls it all together for unity. That's the same type of idea that I did here on mine. This background piece I repeated here. This little heart background piece I repeated here and then I repeated some of the black pieces. Again, that just helps create unity in your piece of artwork. So good luck.